In this video, you'll learn how to use the Stackup Manager for easy navigation within your dielectric stackup. And you'll also learn how to group polygons with common properties into technology layers to help you maintain consistency. And for those of you who have existing projects without technology layers, you'll learn how to automatically create technology layers so you can immediately take advantage of this great new feature. One of the first benefits you'll notice when using technology layers, or tech layers for short, is what happens when you add a polygon to a project that already has tech layers set up. This is a center tapped inductor that was imported from a GDS2 file. On the left is the 2D view and on the right is the 3D view with an expanded Z scale to make it easier to see. So watch what happens when I add feed lines to the inductor. For those of you who've used previous versions of Sonnet, you probably would have expected these new polygons would be lossless polygons. But notice that the new polygons were set to the same metal type as the rest of the metal on this level. How did it know to do that? Well, the answer is tech layers. One thing I should mention before going too far, though, is that tech layers are entirely optional. So if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. If you have a circuit with just one layer and just one type of metal, you probably won't benefit much from tech layers. But if you have a circuit with multiple dielectrics or multiple types of metal, tech layers can aid tremendously in navigating your circuit and ensuring consistency of polygon properties within a layer. So let's look at the tech layer of the polygons I just added. To do this, I'll use the Stackup Manager, which shows all your tech layers. Let's resize it so you can see the whole thing. To resize it, simply click and drag on the right side of the Stackup Manager. The polygons I just added are associated with the tech layer called Metal 6. Notice Metal 6 is highlighted. That means it's the active tech layer. I'm going to double click it so you can see the properties of the Metal 6 tech layer. Metal tech layers define the level of the polygon, the metal properties, the meshing properties, and mapping information. In this case, the Metal 6 tech layer is on level 3, uses a metal type called Metal 6, and uses conformal mesh. It also shows that the polygons of this tech layer were imported from Stream 35 of my GDS2 file. Whenever you import a GDS2 file or a DXF or a Gerber file, Sonnet automatically creates tech layers by default. And if you use Sonnet's Cadence or ADS interface, the layers from your original design will be mapped into technology layers automatically. Now let's say we want to change the Metal 6 tech layer definition to use thin metal instead of thick metal. If the metal type is already defined, you can just select it from the list. In this case, the predefined metal is called Metal 6 Thin, so I select it and click OK. Notice both the 2D and 3D views show that the polygons associated with this tech layer have changed to thin metal. I didn't have to select the polygons, but just changed the definition of the tech layer. And take a look at the Stackup Manager. The symbol for the Metal 6 tech layer is now thin. This is because the tech layer uses the normal metal type, which is thin metal. Notice the symbols for metal 5 and metal 4 take up the entire dielectric. That's because they use thick metal, which is the same thickness as the dielectric. But now let me show you one more case where the metal is thick metal, but not the complete thickness of the dielectric. Let's go back to the metal 6 tech layer by double clicking it. And this time, let's create a new metal that doesn't already exist. You do this by clicking on the New button, and then typing in the new name of the tech layer. In this case, I'm going to say underscore one micron. Set it to use the thick metal model. Type in the new conductivity, and set the thickness to one micron, which is less than the dielectric thickness and click OK and OK again. Now notice that the tech layer symbol takes up half the dielectric thickness. That's because whenever thick metal is not the exact thickness of the dielectric, the symbol takes up half the thickness of the dielectric. That makes it easy for you to know if the metal thickness is exactly the same as the dielectric thickness. 
And by the way, if the metal were just a little thicker than the dielectric, then the symbol would go into half of the dielectric above. Now if you look at the center tap metal, you'll see that the feed line is missing. So let's add a feed line to the center tap. To navigate to this level, I could use the level drop-down, just like previous releases, but I can also use the Stack Up Manager to go there. Just click on Metal 4, which is the tech layer for the center tap, and you're there. Now I'll add the feed line. And notice once again that I don't have to tell the software to create this particular metal, because there is only one metal tech layer on this level it knew what I wanted. Okay, I'm not sure if you notice, but if you look at the 3D view, you'll see that there aren't any vias connecting the underpass to the main spiral metal. There's also a missing via in the back here, where the center tap connects to the main spiral metal. Another clue that something is missing is that the symbol for the via tech layer between metal 5 and metal 6 is unfilled. Whenever a tech layer is not being used, the symbol for it will be unfilled. Let's add those missing vias to tech layer via 5 so you can see what happens. Notice that after the first via has been added, the via 5 tech layer symbol changes from unfilled to filled, indicating that it is now being used. Now, as I add the last via, I want to talk to you about the toolbox. Whenever you click on a via tech layer, the toolbox via icon becomes active. And then, when you click on the Add Rectangle icon, the name of the active tech layer is shown as a reminder. Let's say you want some polygons to have different properties than the tech layer. For example, let's say you want to change these two feed polygons from using thick metal to using normal metal. There are several ways you can do this. The first way is to select the polygons and modify their properties. Notice that the properties are all grayed out and cannot be changed. This is because the properties are defined by the tech layer. But you can override the tech layer properties by simply changing them from inherit to local. This allows you to change any of the properties of the polygons, but keep them assigned to this tech layer. But just keep in mind that once they are set to local, changing the properties of the tech layer won't change the properties of these polygons. The second way to allow for exceptions is to just create a new tech layer with the new properties you wish. Just right click on the Stack Up Manager, select Add Tech Layer, type the name you want for your new tech layer, and select the properties you want for your new tech layer. Then you need to assign your polygons to this new tech layer. Just don't forget to make sure that you set them to inherit or their properties won't change if you change the tech layer definition. So you might be wondering if there is a place where you can see a summary of your tech layer definitions. This is found using the menu Circuit Technology Layers. It shows you all your technology layers, even those that are not being used. This window has columns that are sortable, so you can sort by fill type, for example. And you can also change the definition of the last column to show some other items of interest, such as number of local polygons for each tech layer. Notice at the bottom of the window, there is a field that tells you how many polygons are not assigned to tech layers. This is useful in case you are worried that you accidentally set some polygons to not use a tech layer. So one last tip before you go. What if you have a project that doesn't have tech layers, but has all the dielectrics and metals already set up? For example, a project from an old version of Sonnet. So let me delete all the tech layers from this project to show you. I right click in a blank area of the Stack Up Manager and choose Select All Tech Layers, then press the Delete key, then answer keep so your polygons aren't deleted. So now I have a project that has no tech layers. I can then simply right click in a blank area of the Stack Up Manager and select auto create tech layers. It's that simple. Notice that the unused tech layers don't get created this time. That's because auto create looks at all the polygons in your circuit and creates tech layers based on what it found. Thank you for watching this video on tech layers and using the Stack Up Manager. For more videos, go to sonnetsoftware.com slash video.